What's going on there, folks? Good evening. It's the Earth Master here on this Wednesday, June 22nd, 2022 date. It's about 7.09 p.m. California time. Latest quake shows some movement uh, with a 4.5 earthquake just coming in here. Uh, looks like right just south of the Philippines. We have seen quite a bit of uptick in earthquake activity in that region, also up here around the Kuro Islands. Uh, the Kuro Kamchatka Trench region seen a 5.2 as well. Uh, before we get into the earthquake activity, kind of want to jump into some activity, weather activity that kind of amped up on Tuesday night and also um, uh, Wednesday morning, the Southern California region had a intense uh, flow of monsoonal moisture come up from the south and give them quite the lightning show, 25,000 total lightning events across Southern California. Tuesday night and Wednesday morning. That's one heck of a lightning storm. Let me tell you, that's almost unprecedented uh, for Southern California standards. Now, I know Southern California does get some monsoonal moisture in the summertime, but that's normally in late July and August. Uh, so it looks like uh, there was definitely a, a bunch. 9,427 strikes were cloud to ground. Some of my favorite. Uh, while the others were just basically cloud pulses and didn't reach the ground, meaning cloud to cloud lightning. So it's almost, uh, like I said, a, a pretty large event. There's one of the images here from the Twitter account, Daniel Swain. All those lightning strikes here, of course, throughout uh, Arizona and um, Nevada as well. Looks like, uh, kind of looks like we're missing the state line there between uh, <laughs> Arizona and Utah. Also over here too in Colorado and New Mexico. You guys notice that? All right, so anyway, we definitely could use some of that moisture up here in the north. Uh, there has been a couple fires started from uh, the lightning strikes down there, so that's not a good thing. Uh, but hopefully, um, hopefully no big ones. That's just one heck of an intense lightning event there in Southern California, let me tell you. All right, earthquake activity. Do have some movement coming in here within the last few minutes, including a 5.2. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, right around the Curl Kamchaka Trench, we have been watching this region pretty closely. It's kind of been accumulating quite a bit of stress in this region here over the past few months. We haven't seen really too much large-scale activity uh, down here around the Japan Trench, yes, but this area, definitely a uh, possibility of some larger-scale movement taking place here within that zone. Uh, also seen a little activity we've seen on the EMSC globe. Um, over here around the it looks like it was just south of the Philippines I believe it was a 4.4 coming in uh, we'll check out the EMSC model in a little bit USGS yes they do take a little time to update here on the map uh, one area we're, we're watching as well is around the New Zealand area looking at some movement for, uh, with a 4.4 right around New Zealand all this activity right here kind of following this movement that we seen last night down in the South Pacific Ocean here along the, uh, the plate boundary and also up here on, along the uh, Kermadec Trench, kind of giving some pressure gradients here along this plate boundary. And uh, these, this area definitely can see quite a bit of large scale movement. Uh, I know it's been, uh, well, we had a, didn't we have an eight pointer last year, a little bit further up north in this area. But uh, down here, we can definitely see some larger scale movement as well. New Zealand does get some uh, pretty powerful earthquakes. Uh, looking out over here around the South America region, some movement around Ecuador and the uh, just offshore of Chile, just kind of back building here prior to the Peru-Chile Trench. We've got a 4.6, well offshore, not in the subduction zone, but uh, definitely way out there. And a uh, very shallow earthquake up here in Ecuador. Uh, not too often do we see a whole bunch of shallow earthquake activity along the South America region, so... I uh, gotta watch that region as well. Looks like the Puerto Rico area, 2.5 and above, shows some. We'll drop it down to the all magnitudes. Does not help out too much. Looks like about nine earthquakes here around Puerto Rico. Uh, the latest quake, a 2.2 earthquake in that region. The states, what's going on out here? Not a whole lot throughout the eastern portion of the country, folks, at all. Uh, some movement through the Intermountain West regions, including uh, Yellowstone down into portions of Wyoming as well. Cedar, Utah getting in on their swarming once again and watching this line of activity here through the mountains uh, along this uh, 
along this little boundary area through Nevada. Looks like some activity kicking up here north of Las Vegas. A uh, little movement around the Long Valley Super Volcano once again today. Um, although it's starting to spread out. You guys notice that? Look at this little trailing of events here leading from uh, the Long Valley Super Volcano eastward. A little odd. As uh, far as that specific swarm goes, looks like about uh, 22 earthquakes in the last 24 hours. Nothing within the last hour, and the majority of this earthquake activity still remains really shallow. Now, the de uh, negative depths here, negative 0.5 is above sea level, so depending on the terrain, these could be just right underneath the surface, uh, but I think they're down there just a little bit. Uh, they're definitely not deep earthquakes. Looks like we did have a deeper one, a 5.3 kilometer deep, 1.9 away from the swarm earlier. Uh, either way, still watching this area for, uh, you know, obviously swarms could lead to something much bigger, so we'll watch it pretty closely and uh, keep an eye on it. Uh, Southern California, further down south, a little bit of movement lighting up here around the San Jacinto Fault Zone. Also the Riverside area uh, looks like a uh, little 1.0. Moreno Valley, 14 kilometer depth there off the San Jacinto Fault Zone. And uh, some activity further down on that same fault. Uh, the San Andreas Fault, not showing too much activity today. Looks looks quiet for now. A little swarming activity here just north of Mexicali. Uh, right around the border area. Looks like it's right smack dab on the border. A couple ones kicking up there in that area of California. Uh, further up north, got the movement kind of stretching here from the Cobb Mountain region, the uh, hydrothermal operations out there, a little spotty activity up around the Willits and the Ukiah as well into the coast range, just a couple small microquakes. Nothing going on throughout Northern California aside from that, uh, looks like some activity up here in Oregon. Sweet home Alabama, nope, not sweet home Alabama, sweet home Oregon. I love Oregon, it's beautiful, but eh, trying to get away from the West Coast. 1.0 and a 0.8 somewhat deeper movement here in this area uh, looks like around Foster Lake area not a whole lot uh, look at that look at that town Cascadia I didn't even know there was a town called Cascadia interesting there that's very very uh, hmm alrighty moving up north into the Washington area quite a few quarry blasts all over the place tonight some movement around Mount St. Helens as well. Um, let's go ahead and look at the Yellowstone overview real quick and see if we got any earthquake activity there. Uh, aside from the microquakes we've seen this morning, I don't see a whole lot going on here at Yellowstone, folks. Looks pretty, looks pretty quiet. Uh, the tremor map tonight along the Cascadia itself shows 23 epicenters. And it's kind of odd too. It's here in Oregon, um, in two separate spots. Uh, looks like south of Eugene and north of Grants Pass area. Uh, not a big deal, but uh, looks like it's kind of moving up a little migration far as the trimmer activity goes there along the Cascadia subduction zone. Mount St. Helens events. Let's see if we got anything going on here tonight as far as earthquake activity goes. Uh, yeah, pretty active. Definitely active here over the last couple hours. Quite a few microquakes kicking up here on this specific UTC time day. Uh, we'll go back uh, in the morning time and afternoon, our time, previous UTC day. And of course, there's one earthquake right there. See that? Hold on a second here. Let me see if that's the one there uh, listed here on the Mount St. Helens area. A point two at 11.02. Every time we do this, we end up with a wrong time. See? 11.02 is nowhere near this. It's very odd. So either way, a little activity there at Mount St. Helens uh, showing up on the seismograph stations there. Uh, Alaska, not a whole lot happening. It looks kind of spotty at best here. It looks a little on the quiet side. Yeah, obviously some microquakes, but nothing major building up out there. Most of the activity today definitely been throughout uh, the Pacific Plate and the Philippine Plate here, western portions of it, definitely showing a major push uh, in activity. Let's go over to the EMSC model and see what we picked up down there just a little bit ago. Got a 5.2 coming in. 
um, into the Papua New Guinea area, eastern New Guinea region. That's going to be that earthquake right here. And also up here uh, on the globe, we've seen a 4.4. looks like it's 4.5 now in this area of the Indonesia region. There's that 5.2 up north. So definitely watching this area potentially for some larger scale movement uh, with all these fours and fives popping up on a broad scale. New Zealand's included in that. Definitely have to watch this area. Uh, we have seen some activity ramp up in the Iran area once again. Looking at that swarm kicking up from time to time. Uh, let's go ahead and pull up the tally of the last seven days in this area. Looks like about 11 earthquakes. Is that right? Let's see. Let me go 30 days here and see if that's right. Now, ah, 30 days shows us a little bit more of the events taking place here. Seen quite a few fours and fives off the coast of Iran. Uh, looks like the largest one was a 5.5 right here. Um, about a week or so ago. So definitely a hot spot of activity here recently in that area. Uh, let's see what else we got here, folks. Solar weather activity kicking up. Definitely ramping up as we head towards solar maximum, right? Oh, look, look at this. What happened here? Something looks a little off in the terms of... Uh, hmm, okay. These look a little bit different. I wonder if they're doing this on purpose or if this is some type of error. Uh, normally these are different colors. Same type of map, I mean for the name, but these are different. Uh, anyway, uh, looks like... Yeah, that's very odd. Looks like 38, 30, 38 still growing. 30, 40 is putting on a little show back here. Starting to build up pretty nicely. But aside from that, that's about the only one that's going to step up on stage. Uh, and possibly um, provide us with any type of flaring threat. Looks like 90% chance of a C flare, M flare at 25, and X flare around 5. Although I think those are just a little bit, uh, well, eh, probably about right, I'm guessing. Chrono holes. Got a couple facing Earth here. That could be a little enhancement on the map. See these three uh, over the next, well, looks like they dropped it down a little bit. This was forecasted here tonight and tomorrow night. Uh, with some elevated KP indexes here. So looks like things have changed a little bit. Uh, updated solar imagery courtesy of the Solar Dynamics Observatory is currently unavailable due to widespread power outage. Hopefully this will be resolved soon. So that explains the images that we're seeing up here. Uh, not looking normal. They're supposed to look a little bit different. Color, colorful, I would say. Um... All right, guys, I'm going to jump off here. Um, hope everyone stays safe out there. Again, uh, watch out for lightning strikes. You know, they, they do happen, and there's definitely quite a bit of uh, monsoonal moisture still continuing to work its way up in the portions of Southern California. So uh, it'd be nice if we had some in Northern California because uh, you, you guys know me. I'm a big fan of storms. Uh, got some activity coming into the Aaliyah Permanent Station here in Hawaii. I think we better check that out here real quick. Um, I know I skipped it and I tend to, uh, it just happens to be right in the middle, right in the bullseye, right? I got to remember that the bullseye out there in the Pacific got about 35 earthquakes. This is all, uh, somewhat normal here for this region. These swarms come and go. They're currently around 30 to 33 kilometers in depth. That's very typical since about the 1960s or so that has been ongoing. No major movement or adjustment, uh, or any type of swarming anywhere else aside from our typical region down there on the big island. All right, guys, on that note, have a good night. Stay safe out there, and, of course, be prepared. Um, take care of yourselves. We'll chat at you guys a little bit later on. Peace out, everyone.